Hi everyone, I'm John Fenzel and we're here at the San Francisco National Cemetery at the Presidio in San Francisco, California. Pauline Cushman lived a life full of adventure by any standard, even today. For the majority of her life, she was an actress, but in 1863, during the Civil War, she was presented with the greatest acting role of her life. She became a spy for the Union. She was born as Harriet Wood in New Orleans on June 10th, 1833. Her family moved to Michigan when she was just a young girl, but she never really enjoyed living in the Midwest and wanted more than anything to live in a big city. So when she was just 17 years old, she left her family and moved to New York City to pursue a career in theater. Very quickly, she found acting jobs in the city and took the stage name of Pauline Cushman. She got married, had two kids, and her husband joined the Union Army in 1861, just as the Civil War was breaking out. He returned home very sick, though, and soon died. Much to the chagrin of her in-laws, Pauline returned to acting after her husband's death. She left her children in the care of the family in Cleveland and traveled to Louisville, Kentucky. Now, at that time, Kentucky was a hotbed of dissent. You had these deep-seated divisions between the Unionists and the Confederate supporters. And there was no shortage of violence between them. But within that tension, Cushman stumbled upon the opportunity of a lifetime. One evening after a stage performance, a group of Confederate supporters approached Cushman. They offered her $350 to make a toast to Confederate President Jefferson Davis in lieu of President Lincoln during her next performance. She accepted the proposal and took the money, but reported the bribe to the Union authorities to her surprise, the Union authorities told her to oblige the group and make the toast so she could get closer to the inner circles of those Confederate dissenters. The following evening, Cushman made a toast during the performance. That action, though, cost her her job at the theater, but by doing it, Pauline earned the trust of that Confederate group. Impressed by her apparent loyalty to the Confederate president, the group quickly introduced Cushman to their inner circles, and that's how her career as a Union spy officially began. Pauline traveled to Tennessee acting as a supporter for the Confederacy and over time she fraternized with the Confederate military leaders and when she did she would steal information and secrets about the Confederate Army and pass them on to the Union. Her Union Army handlers warned her of the risks and tried to convince her not to physically steal any documents. Instead she was encouraged to only study information and pass it on based on memory alone but Pauline ignored all the recommended precautions. In the spring of 1863 Cushman stole the map with the dispositions of the Army of Tennessee and stuffed it into her boot. While attempting to cross into the Union lines some Confederate soldiers grew suspicious of her travels and they stopped her. They discovered the map in her boot, arrested her, and took her to Confederate General Braxton Bragg's headquarters where Bragg had her tried as a spy. The trial found Pauline guilty and sentenced her to death by hanging. But in addition to being good, Pauline was also lucky. While awaiting execution, she became sick. Now, while falling sick isn't something most of us would consider luck, this illness saved Pauline's life because it forced the Confederates to delay her execution. As they waited for her to recover, the Union Army began to advance towards the Confederate positions where Pauline was being held, and the Confederate Army decided to withdraw from the area, leaving Pauline behind with a local doctor. When the Union Army reached Pauline, they rescued her just days before her scheduled execution. Cushman made a full recovery from her illness and returned north. Her bravery and her service to the Union was widely recognized. She received public attention and recognition from General Garfield, who was the future U.S. President, and President Lincoln, who awarded her the honorary rank of Brevet Major. Pauline Cushman spent many years throughout the East Coast telling her story. Her performances absolutely fascinated the public. Unfortunately, as time went on, so did the people's interest in the Civil War, and we're seeing that today, in fact. The Reconstruction era was hard for Pauline Cushman because the public had gotten tired of hearing about the war that had just ravaged the country. She moved to San Francisco for a short time where she married again and pretty quickly within the year her husband died and Pauline became a widow once again. And then in 1879, Pauline married Jeremiah Fryer in Arizona. They ran a hotel there for about 10 years, but Cushman struggled with that new lifestyle. The two separated in 1890 after the death of their adopted daughter and Pauline moved back here to San Francisco to give a shot at acting again. She wasn't very successful though and finally accepted that her days of acting were over. 
Pauline's health started to decline rapidly. She was suffering from severe arthritis and developed an addiction to the morphine that had been prescribed to her. She died on December 1st, 1893 at the age of 60. She was alone but not forgotten. The Grand Army of the Republic learned of her death and held a large funeral with military honors. She now lies here at the officer's circle at the Presidio in San Francisco National Cemetery. What we're gonna do now is go see if we can't find her grave. As you can see, her gravestone simply reads, Pauline C. Fryer, Union Spy. I'm John Fenzel here at the Presidio in California at San Francisco National Cemetery, and I thought you'd like to know. Thank you.